sounds like a fart. <laughs> like, a, like the one with the, <laughs> like a, the squeezing squeak. butt cheeks together. <laughs> like, squeeze. <laughs> you gotta say it like that. Yeah. Hands. Touching hands. Oh, rolling dice. Attacking me, attacking you, sweet card smiths, <laughs> ba, ba, ba. magic's never been so good. So, so good, good, so, so good, good, so good. good. <laughs> nice. You like that one? I like that one. That was good. I couldn't help myself. I had to jump in. <laughs> yeah, it feels like the end of bar time, yeah, exactly. but it's just the beginning bar of Commander closed. Smith's. <laughs> That was uh, Sweet Caroline by Lowry Smith. <laughs> uh, welcome to Commander Smith's. I'm Adam Smith. And this I'm Lowry Smith. My cousin, Mr. Yeah. Lowry Smith. Do some think we are. Yeah. <laughs> this is episode number three. Um, we're actually going to be, this is kind of part two of our... Yeah, we're continuing the reserve list idea and just kind of wait, Mark making our way down from you know high down to low and so we're going to start out around the ten dollar range right now 15 and under pretty 15 much. and yeah. under yeah. yeah and then we'll just get down into the, the the really good deals later but first if you needed to uh get a hold of us if you have any questions or comments or anything like that uh best ways to reach us you could follow us on twitter at at commander smiths or you can shoot us an email at commander smiths at gmail.com. Yeah. So those are the best ways to get a hold of us right now. Do we have a like a Hotmail account at all? <laughs> yeah. No? We didn't set that up? Yeah. We'll get to it. Do you still have a Hotmail account? I, I have one floating. I don't I, even know how to log on. To I got to figure out my password yeah, if I'm going to use exactly. that. <laughs> yeah, so um, no Hotmail account. We're going with that Gmail account. Cool. So yeah, we're going to start off today's episode with... Uh, we'll start off high and work ourselves down. Um, all the reserve list cards that we felt... Yeah, uh, people could invest in, and and I think we're going to start off with a pretty sweet one. Uh, Both elves, of it was on our list. Yeah, right? El- elves are one of the major tribes just across magic in general, and we're going to start off with Eladomri, Lord of Leaves. I'm glad you read that one yep. instead of me. I was, yeah, I was looking at him like El Eldamir. Well, yeah. what you got to do is you need to uh, <laughs> fake it, and people will believe you if you have confidence. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, this is, is a pretty good. I mean, he's it's a good green, commander. green, green, green. Uh, legend from tempest it's a 2-2 creature that gives all of uh, other uh, elves forest walk and all other elves shroud and pretty so, badass yeah and uh that's i don't know if i'd actually use him as a commander but he's a good guy to have in your elf deck i think i think he's really good in your elf deck yeah, yeah. And, and it definitely depends on um your play group and where you're around if there's a lot of spot removal then i would consider him being my commander but if there's but more mass if removal if you're trying to add like you, you can't target your own stuff with sure kind of stinks. there's not a whole ton of uh abilities that do that within the elf realm there's maybe like two or three that are really good and powerful um but beyond that um so like a zuri renegade leader you can tap a green and regenerate target elf yeah that so. would stop everything other than regenerating well, I was thinking of uh what's Eladomri. his name that gives the all your elves well that wouldn't be targeting because it gives yeah. all your elves three plus three and exactly trample so yep. it, is it trample with it too? that's that is still a zuri but that is a yes. that's not a targeting ability so yeah. that would still, still work. That would work but still yeah i think this is a, a decent card but um i think we both agree it's only a one of really we don't you don't really want to get multiples of this yeah it's something that you want to play with in an elf deck and it's it's right around ten dollars which feels like a really good like price for a reserved list legend i think even if it was a reserved list it seems pretty decent yeah yeah it feels like a really good like giving evasion giving protection on a cheap body um it feels like a really good card at ten dollars for elves so um yeah, I think that is a solid one of because just about everybody builds an elf deck yeah. in their lifetime. You so. need to have it for your collection. But I wouldn't yeah. go and buy five, ten of these guys because it's just... I mean, you could, but I don't know how much yeah. more it's going to yeah, go yeah. up. Just more of the, the fact that it's reserve list yeah. and good to have in your elf deck. Uh, next on our list, we're actually going to Shallow Grave. This is one colorless, one black instant. This is actually from Mirage. So this is way back in the day. This is when... Oh, yeah. The heart of when we were playing Magic. Yep, that's a major time when <laughs> yeah. we started, yeah. Uh, put the top creature card from your graveyard into the into play 
uh, as though it were just played, that creature is unaffected by summoning sickness, and then you remove it from the game at the end of turn. So this is very similar to Goriel's Vengeance. Goriel's Vengeance, yeah, uh, very The similar. only difference is Goriel's, you have to target a legendary. This targets anything, but it has to be the top creature. So if you have something that you want underneath the, something that just died, then you're kind of screwed. You have to take the top creature that's on your creature. Well, and another thing, I mean... It's not relevant in Commander, but Goryeo's Vengeance is an arcane spell as well. Because um, so, that matters. <laughs> that matters in Modern. So in the Grizz Shoal brand deck, um, maybe we'll talk about it some other time. But uh, yeah, and I don't know if I would totally agree with this being great in the Commander deck, other than like it gives you another shot at bringing like Something. your Commander back yep. from the graveyard, and then you can put it, once it's exiled... You put it in your command zone. And so if you need to have, like, a death trigger on a black creature um, that that uh, needs it to go into the graveyard, and then you can get it out back into your command zone, That this makes it a pretty decent uh, job for yeah, that. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it has more of a feel towards, um, would it be Legacy or L- Legacy, legacy would be deck? Thing, yeah. I mean, it more of a cheap replacement for Goriel's Vengeance if you didn't want to go out and I spend. Would, I would make them work in conjunction yeah. so you have a ton of really fast recursion in a Legacy deck. But so. once again, reserve list card, it's around 9 bucks right now. So I mean, Goriel's Vengeance is 40 <laughs> you say One's reserve list, the other's not. <laughs> yeah. um, the other one's a little bit better, but this one is a, it's a good replacement yeah. for that, I would oh, yeah, think. Yeah. And you could definitely use it in some commander decks all right next one larry the next one that is a card that is kind of a favorite of mine and yours it's called lifeline and so this is an artifact for five colorless mana uh it's from urza saga and it's essentially whenever you have a creature that goes into the graveyard if there's another creature in play at the end of anywhere at the end of turn your creature comes back into play yeah this is a badass card yeah as long as nobody wraths you're getting your stuff back yeah it's crazy i mean you could even even and we've talked about this uh lowry and i on a different occasion but um even if you kill your creatures or somehow they die or whatever and the trigger of them dying and there's still creatures on the board, if somehow now there's a board wipe, those creatures would technically still come, come back. back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Even though the board is wiped, when those other creatures died earlier in the turn, they have the trigger still on the, it that the they're The trigger still back. is there, yeah. And it's, I love it in my Brea uh, uh, Ethereum Sculpture deck. I hate deck. it in your Brea it, deck. <laughs> it allows me to sacrifice Brea, Brea and then just sit there, and then at the end of the turn comes back, gets me two more Thopters. You know, I'm and... so regretting telling you that, yeah, you go ahead and make Brea. I won't make a Brea deck. I like that deck, and yeah. it sucks. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate you letting me do that. It, the greatest thing is it kills any Atraxa deck out uh. there. <laughs> just straight up makes it hard. <laughs> and this one also has been on the rise. Right now we're sitting at about 8 bucks. You can probably get it for about 8 bucks right now, but and it was oh, sitting around like five dollars for a really long yeah. time. And I think over the past two, a year and a half or so, it's gone up. Uh, it's probably almost doubled in price. So yeah. Yeah. And one of the major problems I think with this card, Lifeline, is that the wording is so wonky yeah. on the actual card. It's, it's and, taken us a while to actually get what the the gist of how this card yeah, completely works. So the, uh, one of the best places to go to, and I'll I'll, I'll say it many times, is Gatherer dot com. It's a wizard site. And that has all of the errated uh, wording on every card that you'll ever have questions about. It'll have rulings, and it'll kind of let you know what's going on with the card if you're confused with it. So, and also, doesn't it have, like, which sets, like, not sets, uh, what, like, modern, what sets it's legal in? Yeah, yeah. It'll say if it's legal in modern or uh, commander. commander, legacy, whatnot. Perfect, perfect. All right, and the next card we are going to talk about is... Tithe, right? Yes. Then I pronounce yep. it. All right. <laughs> I, I call it Tithy. Tithy. <laughs> you pronounce that E at the end. <laughs> <laughs> this is a one white instant. Uh, you search your library for a planes card. If you control fewer lands than target opponent, you may search your library for an additional planes card and reveal those cards to all players and put them into your hand. Now, the badass part about this is you can go search for those dual lands. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the thing is, it, as long as you're playing this at the right time where even if you're the actually if you're the starting player it's a little tough to get this to go off early game late game sure. you should be able to find somebody but in yeah. commander it's pretty easy to find somebody there, there's always a ramp player yeah and the card the thing that i really like about the card is that it's a 
car like land selection in a color that doesn't really have land selection. You have about yeah. three decent cards in it, which it's tithe, it's uh, land tax, and it's weathered wayfarer, and yeah. that those are like the playable cards uh, that I th- that I like. They've been trying to print more cards like it that are similar. But um, yeah, this is I didn't even know about it until we were actually searching yeah. going through our reserve stuff last uh this past summer. So like I haven't had the opportunity to even put it in my decks yet. So this is definitely going in next time I get a chance actually. It takes me a long time to get things filtered into my decks when it comes out. Too many yeah. new things. New stuff is fun. Um <laughs> I the only thing like I wouldn't put it in like a green white deck because green has green just has better a, yeah. ramp. Yeah. But in in white or like white black, th- that's what I would go with yeah. definitely. Uh, and then I think also this one has been on the rise, uh, same as Lifeline. It's kind of doubled up in price over the past year and a half or so, and it's continuing kind of on a steady rise over the yeah. last few months here as people are buying up the reserve list uh, stuff here. So uh, next card, Lowry is, is going to be Firestorm, which is one red. It's an instant from Weatherlight. And uh, essentially, it allows you to choose and discard X cards from your hand, and it deals X amount of damage to X amount of permanents or like targets. Uh, and so, like if you discard six cards, you're dealing six damage to six targets, six different targets, six different targets, and you, you need have those have, targets. Yeah, you have to have the six targets, but still. For and this one. is <laughs> this is one card that, like, when we were talking about it, I was like, oh, I get to deal six damage to everything. Great. And yeah. then you're like, no, 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 six to six different targets yeah i'm like oh wow that's actually quite good in my mind for commander you're able to just put in that locust god deck where you're drawing tons of cards trying yeah. to get rid of cards you know wheel of fortune all that stuff and again if you have a graveyard based deck you're able to just discard cards that you want into the graveyard and get value out of it yeah. which is great it's pretty crazy i didn't realize how good this was um but yeah from weatherlight one drop instant that's just yeah amazing it's <laughs> it's great value and you're able to just wreck a board if you need to or get that extra last couple points of damage into your opponent i think it's a great card and right now it's sitting at like seven dollars yeah and i it's been that's kind of at its bottom you can kind of see there's some peaks and valleys here we're kind of at the valley of this well and it it used to be played in legacy dredge okay um and just being able to dump your hand and then get a bunch of cards from your graveyard and so this it, it spikes and then it trails off and right now legacy dredge isn't anywhere near this card but um i think it's a great card for commander yeah like I, we were I think you could even <clears throat> get a couple copies of this one this one i would think because it's not on the rise right now yeah i i have a playset. set i went and oh, got yeah. a playset. Nice. yeah i got four yeah i would definitely this one's i, I like this card definitely a lot on this and if one. you want they actually have a gold bordered version of it which isn't <laughs> worth anything <laughs> yes. but if you're uh want to save even more money <laughs> yeah if you want to save a ton of money go and <laughs> find that for like board. a buck 50 cents or something what does the back look like is it the tour thing where it's like a black yeah had, yeah world tour, world tour. Yeah, x I year have a few of those <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, the next one, I'm actually going to let you talk about this one because you're the one that told me about oh, this. Oh, yeah. This one's awesome. Karn Silver Golem. Uh, so it's a uh, five mana artifact creature that's a 4 4. And Karn is pretty epic and being one of the best planeswalkers out there. But his first version is a creature. And so essentially what he's able to do is when he blocks, he gets minus four, plus four, and becomes an 0 8. And then you can pay one and turn an artifact into a creature that has the same converted or the same power toughness as its converted mana cost. So essentially what that means in my mind for awesomeness is if somebody wants to wrath your board, you're gonna go, well, I'm gonna kill all make sure that you're wrathing all of your artifacts. Yeah, killing well. off their own stuff. Yeah, and definitely. I, and I actually really like him in Doran the of the Siege Tower, because he turns into an eight eight yeah. whenever he attacks and is blocked. Yeah, that's pretty badass. Uh, and I would also look at maybe getting the from the vault version of these, the foil ones. Yeah. because uh, they're about the same price as the original ones too. Yep. So and we and we talked about from the vaults as well like in the previous episode that it's a pre it was a premium premium foil product that was a loophole in the reserved yeah uh, so they're able to actually print some of the reserve list stuff and essentially after this they tighten up that loot yeah. loophole enough people complained it sounds like and then they went okay we're not going to do that in any premium product anymore yeah um, yeah, and this one sitting like you said, eight bucks. It's not, it's not peaking or anything right now. So it's kind of, it actually could be an artifact commander. Yeah, yeah. It's it's one of the better artifact yeah. commanders, colorless commanders um, 
And then, yeah, actually, I've come across some people on Puka that are, like, huge Karn collectors. So they oh, really? want every... Like, I remember he was trying to get this from me because I had a copy of... I don't even know why it showed up on there, but... He's looking for Karn, basically. Anything that had him in the picture. Karn on it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was the first time I've come across a collector there, that was There's somebody... some bad cards with Karn pictures yeah, I on know. them. Yeah, I know. He wanted them all. I think I gave him how, something. How many Beast of Burdens does he have? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I think I gave him something with Karn, but it wasn't anything that was worth anything. It was from old sets. Not reserved yeah. or whatever, but yeah, yeah no. he was willing to pay extra for it. So I was like, all right, sweet. Here's my shitty Karn. <laughs> 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 well, this next card that we're going to talk about is uh, was a like joke for me, but I'll let you yeah. talk about it. Uh, this is Apocalypse. It is two and three red. Uh, it's a sorcery. Remove all permanents from the game and then discard your hand. Now, what we had talked about when the last <laughs> Commander set came out was Teferi's Protection yeah. with the phasing, having every all your permanents phase out and then no one can, your life change can't. It, so we were discussing like Teferi's Protection. And it was kind of like, well, this card is awesome, but like, how do you really use yeah. this? And I was like, well, I guess you could have three red, two co- or like four colorless and a white, and then wipe the board and have your stuff come back. Totally done this and multiple times. Multiple now. times, it's been done <laughs> against me, and I did it as a joke. Yeah. I'm just like, this, that's dumb. There's no way that you're gonna ever get this in Commander. Yeah. So you basically you bust out Apocalypse, and then while that's on the stack, you throw out Teferi's Protection, and all your stuff goes away. Now, granted, you do discard your hand. Yeah. But everybody loses. everything. Everything, including yeah. land, everything that's in the game. It should be an automatic win. Um, I did lose with it once because I couldn't cast both. And I yeah, chose... you had them both in your hand, too. I chose wrong, and I went with Apocalypse. I was one mana off of getting both of them out. And I thought I was actually going to do it. Remember, I was like, oh, yeah, I got it. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm down one. All right, so I guess Apocalypse happens. <laughs> yeah. And, and then we ended up losing over. to Tyson because he had uh, the dragon. Er, er dragon. Yeah, and, and so he was able to play a bunch of fat dragons yeah. really quick. It was bad. He just drew land after land after land. And just, <laughs> it was just like, how did you come back from that? Yeah, it was ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, this one's sitting around five bucks. I, I picked up a few copies of this because I think that's really – your only scenario you'd really want to use it with is Teferi. So well, you almost I mean, want to, I mean, it could be just a board wipe if you're, everybody's out of control and it completely yeah, wipes everybody. It, yeah, and You're going to be down with not having a hand, but if it's late game enough, most people might not have a lot of hand left yeah. either. I actually didn't pick up any of these um, because it was a joke to me. Um, <laughs> it's so not a joke, Larry. This I might, is serious. I'll probably go out and get one of them yeah. uh, just because it's... Uh, Wraths and like just board wipes are pretty important in Commander, so it just kind of depends. And they might print something else that allows you to play this even more. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens here. Hey, you could even talk about like a card like Shimmer that we've uh, we'll talk about here soon. Um, moving on to a card called Opal Essence, which is uh, two white, two colorless enchantment. And essentially, what it does is when it comes into play, it turns all of your other enchantments into creatures. With convert or with power and toughness equal to their converted mana cost. Now this one's tripled in price over the past year, or yeah. a year and a half. And, and the, I th- I think the main reason is because six bucks right now. People are doing like a a ley line deck and legacy with it, and so they start their hand with a bunch of leg, uh, ley lines that kind of randomly protect them against random decks. Yeah, they put a ton in, and once they get to four land, they play Opal Essence and attack with a ton of four fours. Yeah. Um, which, which seems really cool and powerful, so it's at least looked at, and this could be good in enchantment-based decks. Yeah, I was going to say, enchantment, I have uh, my, which one is that? A Laurel. A Laurel deck that's all enchantments, and I'm going to put this bad boy in yeah, there. Yeah, so. and I think this could be a solid card in, like, Xur the Enchanter as well. Oh, yeah, that would be really um, good there. Or if you're less of a, like, I understand that you're all the Miststalker is a Aura deck, but if you want a little bit more enchantment-based control or any pillow fort deck, Opal Essence could be a really nice way to attack. And it's not going to be printed again, so yep, you don't see any cards like this at all. Yep, so, very unique card. Yep, very unique. And, like I said, on the rise here. So uh, next card, we kind of get into our cards of $5 or less, um, and we have quite a few here. Now, these might be ones that you could... Pick up more than one might be a good uh, investment on these. Um, first one we're going to start with is Temporal Aperture. Ap- right? Aperture. Ap- aperture. Aperture. <laughs> we'll edit that out. <laughs> yeah, right. No, nope, we're keeping it in. got to listen to my, Whatever my, you want. my enunciation of things. Uh, so it's an artifact for two. 
Uh, comes into play, tap five, tap it, shuffle your library, and reveal the top card until end of turn. As long as that card remains on the top of your library, you may play that card as though it were in your hand without paying its casting cost. Now, you can't really abuse this one. No, because uh, of the shuffle Making effect. you shuffle. But yeah. it, if you're playing a deck that has a lot of high casting cost stuff, this could be actually kind of badass. Yeah, I think it'd be kind of cool in... Um, shit. Well, it, it's not going to be cool and shit. <laughs> <laughs> that just ruins the card, Lowry. <laughs> what deck are you thinking about? Well, it, it, here's another thing I'm noticing. Yeah. I was actually just thinking, um, I thought it was more of a sacrifice. You could do this every turn. So it's, you know, a random look at the top card, play it for free type of thing. So if you are playing a deck that plays a lot of heavy beaters, uh, Animar deck, my Animar deck is all heavy beaters. True. So that would actually work really well in that deck. And actually, since I bought it this summer, it's jumped in price. I think I bought it for only like 50 cents or maybe even, I don't know, 50 to yeah, 75 cents. Yeah, I picked cents. up one for like a dollar. Yeah, it's over about four bucks right now. So yeah. it, it, there's no way you can abuse it, but I, I could see it being good. In, De- decent value yeah. in certain decks. Like, you mana, that's not that bad. You, you don't want to put it in like... A, um, a deck with a bunch of X spells or counter yeah, spells. No, that would be terrible. Yeah. It, <laughs> but like big creature mana decks uh, it could be pretty beneficial if you randomly hit something pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, next one. Uh, I think this is one that we both like. It's called Urborg Justice. It's a black and a black. It's an instant, and essentially uh, an opponent will have to destroy a sacrifice, mount, sacrifice an amount of creatures. Yeah as you had die that turn. that turn yeah so this is good and i've used this a long time ago and i continue to use it in multiple decks yeah um that deal with sacrificing creatures so uh, gets around indestructible hexproof shroud yeah it, it's a pretty good but i wish it was more of all players but that'd be really <laughs> abusive there <laughs> yeah but it is kind of nice you get to target one player maybe one that's you no one can touch and this you sacrifice your stuff and then boom kill off all their yeah. stuff and so like ways that i have thought about using it as just like sacrifice a bunch of my creatures for value and then play Urborg Justice and have somebody lose a bunch of their creatures yep. to it. Yeah, and it's nice that it's an instant, so that's yeah. a big, big plus or on that one. Or if somebody attacks you and you got a chump block with a ton of stuff to survive yep. and then you turn around and play that and wipe their board with it, essentially. That's pretty nice, too. And and most of these, uh, I'm just going to say right here, they're, I'm going to say the price now, but since we bought them, we were buying them when they were under a dollar, and this one is over $3 now, and that's all the jump in the last six months. So yeah. I, I still feel like they're good buys. Uh, that is, It's a unique card that I don't. there is no other way to... Why well, are we saying goodbye to them? <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second. I'm like, I'm not saying goodbye. <laughs> But yeah, I, I still feel like this is a, a decent buy for this, um, for three bucks even. Yeah, yeah, it's a solid card. Yeah. Uh, next is Second Chance. And actually, um, I was just hearing this one might actually have jumped more than what I have here. But Second Chance is one blue, two colorless, and it's an enchantment. During your upkeep, if you have five life or less, sacrifice it and take an extra turn after this one. So that's kind of badass to have out on the board early. It's... Well, it or makes not early. People... You can have it any time during the yeah. game, but no one's going to target it early in the game because get down to five life. Uh... It's it's a pass. It's a cheap way of having like you take an extra turn. There aren't many three mana take extra turns, and there's definitely drawbacks to it. So you got to make sure that you can survive into the five or less life range. Yeah, that <laughs> normally doesn't happen. Normally, yeah. when you're dying, it's like. You're at like 15 or 20, and they're like, oh, how much life do you have? How much life? Okay, you're dead. I'm going to make sure you die <laughs> yeah. if that's on the field. Um, but but it, it's, another deck that this is sweet in is like Zur the Enchanter. You go search it up when people start targeting you, yeah. and then they got to make sure that they're killing you. Or you could do it because Zur, you can get it's uh, instant speed, right? Well, you got to attack with Zur. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. And so on that attack trigger, you get to go and search for an enchantment of three or less and then put that into play. And so, you know what I was thinking? What... Actually, it wasn't the. It is second chance that jumped, but it was the foil that jumped. Oh yeah, yeah. The foils are quite a bit more expensive. The regulars are three dollars right now, and the foils. Give me a second. 
Yeah, the foils are oh. holy crap. <laughs> the foils went for they were under fifty, and now they're at one hundred and ten bucks right wow. now. So yeah, the foils have jumped quite a bit uh, recently. So, but yeah, de- decent card. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't, get... I wouldn't suggest buying the no. foil at this point. Yeah, no, you know, you, you, that ship has sailed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'd get a couple or maybe just one or two copies of that. I, you wouldn't have to get a ton on that one, but I think it's a decent card to have in your, your, I, I think it's an, image. yeah, I think it's an interesting card Yeah, at the very least. The, uh, so the next card that we want to talk about is sustaining spirit. It is, it's an O3 creature that is a white and a colorless and it has cumulative upkeep colorless and a white. And essentially if your life total goes below one, Goes to one instead. It goes to one instead. Badass with what? It's uh, solemnity. Solemnity, and it's very similar to like warship. Yeah. And so. Yeah, and this card is drum, drumped, drumped. Can I say jumped? Drumped. <laughs> you're <laughs> you're <laughs> drumped. You <get> dunk. <laughs> <laughs> it has jumped dramatically over the past actually about month or so. Uh, this one has gone up yeah. from under a dollar to over three dollars. That, that would so. be Solemnity's fault right yeah, there. Yeah. Like just anything. With... Although that's been out for longer, it just took a while for people to actually buy up the inventory. Yeah, people are slow. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> Take advantage of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I didn't buy a ton of these. I think I only got five copies of them, but I think I got those yeah. for about seventy-five cents or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. So. And so that—that's the thing—is like just making sure you're trying to buy low. Um, so if it's jumping right now, if you think it's going to drop a little bit, give it some time, uh, because solemnity is kind of, uh, a, a newer card. It makes cards a little bit hotter. And in my opinion, if they fall out of favor after about six months, things drop down a little bit again. It's one of the few cards from alliances that is actually good. Yeah, I there mean, isn't a lot. Not from not including Force of Will. But, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not <laughs> not one of the best cards ever printed. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, we're that, gonna cut that, that, that part out. That was a, that was a very <laughs> horrible take. <laughs> oh, all right, we're gonna move along from that. <laughs> Time to hit the old dusty trail. Uh, so the next one we're uh, going to talk about is Recycle. This is two green, four colorless enchantment. Skip your draw phase, but whenever you play a card, draw a card. Now that includes land, so you are playing you're a playing land. the land. During your discard phase, choose and discard all but two cards. So potentially, I mean, you always have two cards in your hand. Because if you discard down, you're always yeah. And then whenever you're playing something, you're going to be getting that back. So, I I think it's a good EDH card. I mean, six six mana to potentially everything you play, you're always going to have two cards in your hand. Now, if you can somehow abuse that, I don't know how you would abuse that though. How can you play? There's got to be ways to abuse this, but no one's figured it out yet, and that's why this one's still at about a buck buck twenty five right now. Yeah, I think one way would be to like land ramp with Oracle of Moldiah and Azusa and just like filter through your deck a lot quicker so that getting stuck. Now, do you think that would work with uh, Escape Shift? But your stuff would come in tap, so that's not going to Yeah, work that comes into well. play. But tap. they would all come into play. One, one card that I would really like playing it with is Damia, Sage of Stone. And that's uh, like from the com- original commander sets. And it's a 4-4 four, four death touch. Skip your draw step as well. So everybody's skipping draw steps. <laughs> Who so needs card. a draw step? But at the beginning of your upkeep, you draw up to seven cards. If you're okay. below seven cards. So this forces so, you to have less than seven cards, and then you then draw the up beginning. to seven cards. Yeah. And then you play more cards What like colors that. Is, is that one? That's in green, black, and blue, and then it's four colorless. Hey, I like that combo. That's a good idea. Yeah, so it it seems like a... Deck idea. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. And it's, and the cards <laughs> I never only, made her with the original it's, Commander it's a buck decks. fifty. It's hard to work with. Yeah, I it haven't is. made that deck. So though. Recycle is like a buck fifty right now, and it's kind of just an interesting, cool card. Yeah, I, I think I did pick up about eight or nine of that one. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty decent for a Commander deck. I mean... It's a lot of draw or potential it, it, yeah, draw. Yeah, a lot of potential draw. Yeah. The uh, uh, the next one would be Volras Shape Shifter. Uh, Volras Shape Shifter. It's two blue, one colorless for an O one, and essentially you can pay two to discard a card, and then Volras Shape Shifter is a copy of copy the, of the card that or the creature the that's on creature. top of your graveyard. Yeah. 
Uh, that's pretty badass because you could that you could play. This is early turn. Yeah, and then you just another deck that you're playing a bunch of big fatties, and you just tap two, throw that in the graveyard, and boom, he just becomes a copy. I, th- of I that. think he's super awesome in yeah. Leviathan Tribal. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Leviathan we just dis- tri- discard a <laughs> Leviathan and <laughs> <laughs> what. What's the big whale that's uh, the Jol... How the heck do you say that one? You know what I'm talking about? The Jolaka... J- <laughs> from, j- j- from Cold Snap? Yeah, j- yeah that's exactly... I'm going to let you... No, no you're going to let me... <laughs> dis- <laughs> You're gonna let me just wither. I'm not gonna even. It's the one from Cold. We Snap. can't even. We can't spell it enough to find it. <laughs> yeah, I bet you would take a half an hour just to find that card. You all know what I'm talking about. J- Jaluka. Nobody knows Jaluka. what you're talking about. <laughs> Anyways, you're not gonna make a tribal deck with that one. I think this card is pretty decent. It's a little spendy. It's at six bucks, but it's been at six bucks for forever whoops that was me hitting on the table there (laughs) smooth (laughs) yeah uh but it's been at six bucks forever uh hasn't jumped really i mean it jumped back it looks like in october well a little quick um, jump but so what happened was somebody found like it kind of made a legacy deck reanimator reanimator legacy deck that allows you to discard big creatures, turn that into it, uh, and then reanimate those big creatures again. Gotcha. So it, um, it spiked it, at uh, about what was that, fifty bucks, and then it immediately dropped back down. Yeah, people <laughs> were like, "Ah, it's not that good, yeah. actually." <laughs> I guess it did. It has stayed at that six bucks before it was under a dollar, so it has risen since then. It stayed at the six dollar mark. So um, next card is Purgatory. I actually really like this card. It's almost kind of like. A second you, you have to kill a creature not even twice like okay let me just explain it yeah two colorless a white a black enchantment whenever a creature card is put into your graveyard from play put that card up, up underneath purgatory during your upkeep you may pay four and two life and you can take the one card from underneath purgatory and put it in to play as though it were just played that's a, that's a lot of words. How how do you want to use that? Yeah. So basically, what you want to do is it, your creature dies. It goes underneath purgatory. Your upkeep starts. Pay four mana and two life, and it comes back into play. So you don't have to cast it again. It isn't just going back to your hand. It's actually going right back into play. So it's kind of tough to actually kill a creature, somebody's creature that has purgatory out, until you get rid of purgatory. Two life is nothing. No, yeah, two life is nothing in commander, and four uh, can be a little bit if you're can... looking for if if it's little stuff. But you're probably if you have big fatties in there. I love big fatties. Gotta That's love why. The fatties. <laughs> <laughs> but you have the biggins, and they go underneath there. You uh, he's you just play him back for four for mana. Free. Yeah, and. Um, I, I'm just trying to think of a way to like abuse this kind of thing. Like maybe if you, you have just it, like in the... to abuse. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can just see the, the abuse. So like, okay, let's say it's in a black, white, red deck, and then you have like sneak attack with it, and so you are able to like Ooh. shoot out really big creatures, and then they go under purgatory. Now, and then sneak you pay attack for... is sacrifice or exile? Sacrifice, sacrifice at the end of the turn. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that works out pretty good. It'd be it'd be cool. Um, or... but then you potentially you have no graveyard with this. You could potentially when, go that route, yeah. Because does it choose whenever put a creature, put that on? No, you don't even get the choice. It, it just happens. It goes under purgatory. Yeah. So no creature graveyard. You can move everybody else's graveyard. Well, that's kind of nice because, yeah. like, purgatory gets rid of hell then and every, yeah. everything goes <laughs> they just go to, to purgatory. purgatory. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I like the uh, the flavor on that card. Uh, we're sitting at about 50 cents with that one. So cheap. pretty, pretty cheap. Uh I a lot of these I just need to add to decks to see how they work because I think these would be kind of fun to play with. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. Yeah. So, uh, next one that we're looking at here is Spectral Guardian, which is a creature. It's two colorless, two white, two three. It, it's a two three, and it essentially gives all of your artifacts uh, non ar- non creature artifacts non creature artifacts shroud as long as he remains untapped. Okay, so he can't attack. Yeah. Or you have to give him vigilance. Well, or yeah. <laughs> um, and this card's sitting at forty cents, and it's cheap. It's cheap protection, along with being a creature, and it allows you to um, play a, a non-artifact heavy deck. Yep. And yeah. It's, uh, and it's just having surround protection is a solid uh, strategy. In and, commander, and most of the time you don't need to target your non-creature artifacts, anyways. Yeah. So yeah. that's actually a big bonus. You know, if you have your 
artifact creatures, a lot of times you're trying to do things to them, put equipment on, blah, blah, blah. But with it just being an artifact... Yeah. You don't normally target your artifacts. <laughs> so, uh, it's a pretty decent card. I wouldn't go crazy on it, um, but just to have in your collection, uh, definitely... It, it's, it's, it's been steady at 40 cents 40 for cents, a really long so, time. Yeah. It's, so. it's super cheap pie. Uh, next one is Dominating Lycid. Uh, what this one does, basically, it's a 1-1. One, one. I went, it, A lot of words here. Uh, I'll just break it down make it easy. It's one colorless, two blue, tap it. It turns into a creature enchantment, which you put on somebody else's creature and you gain control of it. Except it also has tap one blue and you can lose that ability so it can turn back into itself. Into a creature, it yep. goes and back to that And then their creature opponent. goes back to them. So yeah. uh, basically you can, if you have a deck that's sacking creatures or you have that ability, you can take their big fatty. Yep, so I always assume they're big fatties there. That's, <laughs> oh, what else would you take? <laughs> take their big fatty, sack it, tap one, you know, turns back into itself. Uh, take somebody kind else's. Of like, yeah. It's a slow machine gun that gets rid of yeah. um, fatties. Fat. <laughs> or you just attack them with it. With it. Or, or, yeah, mean, that's the other thing. Have, have the best creature on the battlefield yep. uh, so. at a consistent rate. And it's sitting at about probably 70. You can get this for 75 cents. Pretty, pretty cheap. Uh, and then we move into Guiding Spirit. I don't think you like this one as much. I, I'm not a fan. Yeah, this one was uh, one colorless, a blue, and a white for a 1-2 flying uh, if the top card of target player's graveyard is a creature, you can put that creature card on that player's library. So it's a little slow. I was thinking more of this one was more of like getting your creatures back. But yes, you are putting it back on your library, which kind of sucks. Yeah, it's it's really slow. So unless you're playing from the top of your library, um, I, I don't see the validity in this yeah. really. Um, I mean, there are, there are some like green cards that would allow this to kind of work out all right like lurking predators but then is, if you're playing with green then you definitely got three colors there because we got blue and white here yeah so. yeah so you're playing blue white green you're you're in bant um like you just got to find ways that in my mind that would work with this but it's in my mind it's also too far too slow to just put a creature on, on top. top of you for yeah. value unless you have a draw if you have some way of drawing that right away but a then, ton yeah. yeah, I'm not I, a fan. This one's a one one of for Am your I, collection. Should I talk you out of it? Yeah. No, I have it. Don't worry, you didn't talk me out of it. <laughs> I already own it. <laughs> but it's at 50 cents. I mean, some of these, I, that's what I did is I went through and I picked up my reserve stuff of the ones I wanted. And then I just made sure I had enough, um, you know, the $2 minimum you have to have yeah, for yeah. TCG. Oh, yeah, that's very So true. I made sure I had enough and then this would be part of the, you know, I'd throw 50 cents at it. I don't think I got more than one copy of this. So, but... It's a decent card you could have in a commander deck. Next. Next one is... Mangara's. Mangara's Tome. Uh, and this is an artifact for five mana. And it has a lot of words on it again. That's <laughs> one problem with the uh, reserved list. Is that they're wordy people back then. <laughs> they so wanted I to make sure everybody understood what the card did, so they <laughs> over-explained what they did instead of just breaking it down into a couple sentences. So uh, when Mar Mangara's Tome uh, comes into play, search your library and choose any five cards. Shuffle these cards and put them face down under Mangara's Tome. Shuffle your library afterwards. If you lose control of Mangara's Tome, remove all cards under it from the game. Uh, tap two, instead of drawing a card... Put the top card from under Mangara's Tome into your hand. So it's... It's kind of badass. It's interesting if you're in like a slower um, style of like playgroup. Because it, it is a... Uh, you're going and tutoring for five, five different cards. cards. Yeah. And then whenever you draw a card, you're able to get that into your hand. Yeah. So it's a slow way, but it's it's pretty efficient. Five mana... To go and find five, five cards. cards that you need um, seems pretty good. There, there are uh, there is one other card that I can think of off the top of my head that's similar. It's from Scourge, and I believe it's called uh, Parallel Thoughts. And it's two blue, three colorless enchantment, and you get to go and search for seven. And whenever you draw a card, you can choose to draw a card from there. Oh, that's a lot better. And see, but, <laughs> but it's how much only in blue. Oh, it's only, but oh yeah. So this one's any any color for this. this it's yeah, artifact. artifacts can fit into any yeah. color. That is only for blue. And same thing, if it goes away, all your cards are exiled. Yeah. Um, I, I like this as well because uh, you can do this. It's not just at the beginning of your turn. It's whenever you draw. 
then you tap the yep. two and you can draw that instead, which is kind of cool. Like, I, I, I'd hate it. it. It would suck. I would think it would be a lot worse if it said at the beginning of your upkeep, you may draw from here instead. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. But then making it so that you can, if you're about to draw, tapping the two. That I wish that was out of there. It'd make it a little bit better. Sure. But yeah. <laughs> if but, only we could make our own cards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but again, this one's only sitting at a buck from Mirage. You know, it's an old set. It's. It's not gonna go down because it's reserve list. So yeah, it's I, only a dollar. Yeah. So like, I don't know how it could go down. There's not much further down yeah. it can go. <laughs> and it actually has been on the rise. I mean, we. I think I got these for under fifty cents. Yeah, I, I, I made I my agree. money back here. <laughs> so it's up to a dollar. <laughs> so, it, it, yeah, it's slower. Yeah, I, I, I dig it. Um, next one. Oh man, Equ- <laughs> Equipose. Equ- I would. I would Equip- Equipoise? 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 We'll edit that one out. It sounds like a fart. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like the one that's like, the, like a, the squeezing a squeeze. bud cheeks together. <laughs> Equipoise? <laughs> you gotta say it like that yeah. now. Oh, now I want to play it in the deck so I yeah, can no. just every time I'm playing it. I play Equipoise? So, Wait, I don't, I don't know fart? if you've noticed, but this is... Just the name of it is worth putting it in a deck or two. <laughs> yeah. Just so you can, like... Equo, please. <laughs> <laughs> and have people look at you. Oh, oh man. Uh, so I'll tell you what the card does. It's <laughs> one white, two colorless. It's an enchantment uh, during your upkeep for each land target opponent or target player controls in excess of the number of lands you control. Target land, he or she controls. Wait, they sac. Oh, phases out. There we go. Phases it's out, a phase yeah. out. That's phases. I was trying to think. They sacrifice it or phase it. Yeah. So they phase it out. Uh, so we're bringing all this phasing back with uh, phasing is yeah. really kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really now. confusing, but um, they made it kind of they made it easier. With, yeah. Um, the new rule change kind of making it so tokens can actually phase in and phase out because they used to not right. Remember they used to phase. I think is what it was. I I when have... tokens or tokens on your creatures phased the tokens were gone i'll, I'll be honest i don't remember like being able to understand phasing for we the, never played with yeah, them like eight, we, 17 years if we've if we've been playing yeah. for 18 i haven't understood I think it for we, 17 i think that was the part of the problem is we didn't get it very like it and was then we so just confusing. didn't play we're like it. uh f that we're not playing with phasing yeah. cards we never said that but i've never played it in a deck i had that worm that one that would flip and when it came back, it had a counter on it or something. I don't remember. I believe you. Yeah, I don't remember. Anyways, uh, this still has more to it. Repeat the process for artifacts and then creatures. So not only land artifact, you get land artifacts and creatures that you can do this, and you can choose different people. And it doesn't. You're not phasing out any of your yeah, stuff. It's, it's to your opponents. And so this seems like a really cool like balance. legal balance. Yeah. yeah, balance is banned for a reason, but this is kind of like um, a consistent balance that's an enchantment it stays in play and it's always kind of checking during upkeeps yeah and so it seems just kind of like um a legal way of, of doing balance i mean it, people it's keeping bringing people, people in check yeah. yeah i mean it's uh, people that are doing a lot better you know because it's always people that have more than you yep. so if you're the one that has the most then this isn't going to work yeah so, so if you have the most creatures the most be, land, be the most bad artifact. at making decks <laughs> yeah. and be just bad at being play ahead anything. and plan yeah. on equipoise please <laughs> 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 it's, oh, why is that so funny? <laughs> it's sitting at about a buck right now, so pretty cheap. Um, I, I picked up a few copies of yeah, this Yeah, me guy. too. Yeah, yeah. I, I like it a lot. So, uh, next one. Ah, you get a good one here to read. I don't even know how to say Anzirin Anzirin Ruins. <laughs> and so, uh, essentially, this is an uh, enchantment. Uh, two colorless, two red. And what it does is choose a creature type. Creatures of that type don't untap during their controllers on tap step so this with, is pretty badass against if you're playing a bunch of people that have tribal and tribal is a big thing right now because that was the last commander set that they supported you know yep. dragons vampires and then they keep supporting it with uh, uh standard stuff Ix- coming ixalan out. is yeah, heavily ixalan in tribal rival, rivals, rivals of ixalan, of ixalan. all yeah. of its tribal so um i mean it, it seems like a very relevant card right now sitting at a little over two dollars yeah and it has had a huge jump since uh ixalan actually because yeah. there's more tribes there yep. so why did it jump there you go <laughs> there you go yeah and and they're they're only going to print print more tribes in the future yeah and if you think about it when people are building decks especially for newer people not saying new people only build tribal decks but <laughs> noobs <laughs> but it's an easy way to get your deck to work together with yeah. itself when yep. you make a tribal i mean a lot of my decks i'd probably say 60 to 70 percent of them 
have kind of a common tribe that's in it, you know. Because yeah, got... you're a noob. <laughs> <laughs> Douche. <laughs> that, that's why I said 60%. That isn't a lot okay. of mine. 60 to 70%. Yeah, so you're 40% uh, not noob. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said 60% are not, I don't know. Yep, 40%. Yeah. I was saying 40% are my are my tribal oh are they say. yeah i would say that because okay. i have my okay so what, i'm wrong. whatever i'm not going to go through my list of which ones i have but no you shouldn't <laughs> yeah because don't take forever <laughs> i hate you larry <laughs> you're drunk that's why you're you're picking on me right I'm now. i'm drunk <laughs> yeah you're drunk remember you pick on me when you're drunk <laughs> all right well we're going to share something <laughs> uh-oh what are we sharing oh he brought a beer he is drunk <laughs> Did you plan this? You totally planned. I did. It. He, has a, <laughs> he has a cup and he has a bottle opener. Oh. We're gonna we're gonna share. <laughs> so what this? I brought a beer. It's from New Belgium. It's a honey orange triple, uh, Belgian style, and it's a uh, it's a solid beer. <laughs> So now there's a reason for me to be a mean guy to you. <laughs> We're gonna and get to the same level. So I, yeah, I can... get on my level. <laughs> tell me, tell I me like what you think, you think there, Larry. This is awesome. All right, let me t- let me take a taste quick. Yep. Hmm. I like that. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. I'm gonna try and bring you good beers if you call me a drunk. So. <laughs> oh, I like this. I going to call you drunk and you bring me beer. Yeah, I gotta figure it out. <laughs> nice. I'll, I'll try and have a different one uh, every time. Nice. <laughs> and, and then you're giving a shout out to. Is this a? This isn't local. Is no, it? no, no, no. New Belgium's. Uh, oh, New they, Belgium. They do I didn't hear you say that. Fat tire and yeah, they do a I lot like of good stuff. They're really good. Very nice. So. All right, reparations is our <laughs> next card. One white, one blue, and a colorless enchantment. I like these enchantments. A lot of these... Yeah, enchantments are kind of fun, but yeah. this is... Uh, whenever target opponent successfully casts a spell that targets you or a creature you control, you may draw a card. Now, the best part about this is its flavor text. And it's, sorry I burned down your village... Here's some gold, <laughs> and that's great. That's, yeah, I love that he totally just has his hand there pointing to gold, and you have this wife and husband. He, he looks there. like super solemn. He's pointing to some gold. There's a burning village in the background. <laughs> just this smoke. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll take this gold. I Thanks. guess. <laughs> I love it. I never noticed that until you pointed that out. That's and, awesome. But it it does it. It's another card that kind of it gives it pseudo protection. Uh, Whenever you get something targeted by an opponent, you're drawing card. And as far as I know, drawing cards has always been good. Yeah. And this is in not necessarily the drawing card colors. Uh, well, Whoa, blue. No, what? Blue, but uh, yeah, not white. That. Sorry, I, I meant with the white. <laughs> edit that. No, I just <laughs> meant... That if was... you're in white, blue, you have blue and you're, That's you're all you drawing a bunch of cards. Blue. Yeah. <laughs> this one, uh, sitting at about a buck. I've had it for a long time, and then I picked up a couple more when we were doing this going after the yeah. reserve stuff so and it's i mean i, I think, haven't put it in anything but th- at least the very least if somebody's targeting that you get to draw a card yep it'll so. replace itself yeah it'll be um it's a solid card yep all right next one uh, accumulated knowledge which is an nope. ancestral oh. knowledge oh ancestral knowledge it's uh enchantment white blue good goal uh cu- cumulative upkeep one and then when it comes into play, uh, look at the top ten cards of your library. Then remove any number of uh, from the game and put the rest back on top of your library in any order. If it leaves play, shuffle your library. This is badass, I think, because not only are you filtering out stuff that you don't need anymore. Um, like if you go through and you're like, oh, well, I guess I don't need land anymore because I already have enough. It, it's a really good way to get through your deck. Not only that, but you get to pick out th- whatever th- ten amount cards. of good cards you that got you like. A lot of cards to choose from with that. It digs deep. Yeah, and then if you're using that with um, Solemnity, you got another of upkeep you can get rid of. But even still, God, we just keep bumping the table yeah, here. Sorry excited. about that. <laughs> We're drunk. Like, oh my God. Yeah, one, <laughs> one, one sip. Oh my gosh, I'm wasted. <laughs> <laughs> but um, even with the first turn, paying just one and then finding the best card of the top ten cards and having that being your first yeah. one you draw, that's pretty badass. Yeah. And it's just being at, digging ten, finding at least one card to put into your hand is really powerful yeah and worst case scenario it isn't if somebody destroys this you lose those cards you're 
library just gets shuffled. Yeah. So, and, and at the same point, like I said, if this is late game, you don't need any more land. Well, f those lands. Let's just throw okay, those away yeah. and thins your deck. Yeah. So even if it does get shuffled through or gets killed and shuffled, at least you don't have those lands in there anymore. Yeah. So I definitely like this card it's sitting at about probably a buck fifty. Um, not really. I mean, it's kind of been on the rise, but not ancestral knowledge. There we go. All right. Next one is three wishes. <laughs> oh man. Oh, a lot of words again. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of wish we didn't have to talk about it. This one is two blue, one okay. colorless. It's an instant. Take the top three cards from your library, look at them, and then set them aside face down. You may play those cards as though they were in your hand at the beginning of your next turn. Bury any of those cards not played. So it, it's kind of tough because if you don't play those, you're already tapping three to play this, and then you got to play them by your next turn or otherwise you lose them. So that's kind of the tough part, but you can draw three. So if you get a land in there, play that bad boy. Um, yeah, this is this is really similar to the new draw mechanic for red, where you're exiling cards off of your library, and then you have to play them within a certain term limit. And so this is probably where that idea came from for the new red cards. Um, yep. But this is uh, it's still different and unique within it's, blue. And jumped a little bit in the last year. Um, was under a buck. Now it's two bucks. So it's not. It jumped more than that. It was about four dollars, but it's kind of come back down a little bit. Um, one card, I would say, maybe to just get maybe a couple copies, not necessarily. Yeah, not a not ton. I don't, I don't think it's guy. anything that's no. going to blow up like crazy. No, and, and this wouldn't be more of EDH. I guess it's okay in EDH, but I wouldn't put this probably in any of my blue EDH decks. Would you? No. <laughs> Even though we're doing this as an EDH thing, um, it could go in a deck, and that's why we're saying pick up maybe one or two copies, yeah, or but two I, copies. Wouldn't, I wouldn't load up on it. So, can be used. <laughs> uh, next one, which is an interesting effect for green, but it's card, uh, Scarwood Bandits. It's two colorless, uh, two green for a 2-2 two, two with Forest Walk, and then you can pay... They're bandits. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's their creature type. They're I don't know if that's bandits. true anymore. But it's two colorless <laughs> and a green to tap it, and you get to steal any artifact. Now that uh, the person you're stealing from can pay two to stop that, uh, but it's kind of a, a unique effect in green stealing artifacts yep. or just stealing in general. It doesn't happen a whole it ton. It can be at instant speed, so you can do this when somebody's tapped out and you're like, hey, you have that soul ring there. Although they could tap the soul ring. That doesn't work. <laughs> Unless they've already tapped uh, their or, soul Yeah, ring. there we go. Yeah. yeah, Unless they're all tapped out. They're like, hey, I'll take your soul ring. Yeah, Thank you very that's much. That's pretty good. And then once you have it, they can't gain control of it back unless until they kill him. Yeah. dies or specifically says at the end of the game you have to give it back as well oh yeah. damn it i thought you got to keep it i you know i did too that was uh it's not really to, intuitive do you yeah. remember playing for ante we kind no, of did a I don't little bit that. i think we had like i, I, I hated vaguely it. remember maybe it was with my friends at school but it. we had like specific cards we we're like okay it can't be this or this or this i think we had like five cards and then if it was one of those five, you had to flip the next card. Shiv and Dragon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate I hated Annie for the same reason why I hate pogs. Yeah. Like pogs. I, <laughs> I bought those pogs. I want to keep them. Yeah. I don't want to lose them. Kids, no, look Auntie up what was, pogs were. Yeah. And go to your local Walmart. I'm sure they'll still I was have never it. on the pog I had a few because Nick, my brother, had them, but I yeah. never actually played pogs. I had much. them until somebody won them from me. What so. were the the metal ones are called slammers? Yeah, they're slammers. <laughs> they're awesome. <laughs> Yeah, Anti was the worst thing. I'm glad that they got rid of that because that, that's kind of terrible. Uh, but that card sitting at about three bucks right now. And then I think our last one, it's a pretty decent commander. Uh, Matron Stromgold? Mar Martin Stromgold. Mar Matron St Stromgold? It's Martin. It's essentially it's Martin. Martin. M A R T O N. Mar Martin. <laughs> <laughs> that's another 90s reference. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, so we got two colorless, two red. If he attacks, all other attacking creatures get X plus X until end of turn, where X is equal to the number of other attacking creatures. He does not get that, however. Uh, it also takes effect for blocking as well. Uh, all your blocking creatures get X plus X with the amount of but, blocking creatures. But yeah, Mr. Storm Stromgold has to block as well or attack. You mean Mr. Martin? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I won't say that. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, it's, so he's a one-one kind of. Uh, you want to make him like yeah, you got to make indestructible it or unblockable, something like that, so that they yeah. actually can't touch him. But you play that with a bunch of little dudes instead of big fatties. Um, and this then you make him big fatties. Badass. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's actually a pretty decent commander. I wish it was multiple colors. I, I just don't like monocolor commander decks. It just I feel like you don't have a lot to work with. It just restricts your answers when you're one color. Yeah. So I typically try to stay away from just one. I think I might have one one color deck. I think it's uh, uh what's the commander that's a planeswalker, the green dude? Fraley's. Yeah, that's Lemon my only one. Because I, I I tried to make that like my sixty card elf deck that I had. Yeah, very similar. So I tried to make it like that. Whatever. So. Anyways, see, he has an elf work. deck. Everybody builds an elf deck yeah, at every- one point or another. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Eladomri, <laughs> go for it. Yep. Lord of the Leaves. Everybody builds a sliver deck. Do you? I actually have never built a sliver deck, so oh. I actually that's a false statement it's 60, right there. 60 cards I have, but... You never built one commander? No. Loser. Have I? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Not that you've seen, at least. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we're kind of starting to wrap it up a little bit. Uh uh, one cards, one right. cards, it's a bit of a stretch here. Uh, it just kind of depends. The reason why I'm thinking Fungal Bloom has uh, some potential. It is an enchantment. It's a green and a green. And essentially you pay one green and you can put a spore counter on target fungus. It's two green actually, sorry. And you put a spore counter on target fungus. Now the reason why I think this could be important or like kind of jump in the future is that Dominaria is the next set that's coming out. So a lot of fungus? Potentially. So Time Spiral had a large fungus theme, uh, and that's just, you You kind of only have that on Dominaria. You get the sapperlings when you take off the spore counters. So this is something that can really enable that strategy if they come out with a like a, a fungus legend. And it's it's only about 75 cents right now, yeah, too. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's cheap. cheap, but it, it could be, you know. Uh, it could jump I, very I can see big it being if, 3 to $5 easy. Yeah. Um, yeah, not, so, not a bad pick. Uh, next one, I'll let you introduce this one yeah, because this it's is, your favorite. It's a it's a personal personal favorite. It is uh, <laughs> leeches. It's a sorcery that's one colorless, two white, uh, and essentially it says uh, target player removes all poison counters, oh, and they no. lose they lose one life per poison counter removed. And poison is, is awesome. The worst <laughs> thing ever created. <laughs> And uh, maybe we'll do a debate on that someday. Uh, Why don't you like my Skitherix? Uh, because it's awesome. No, <laughs> I don't have that deck. I don't. Anymore. I don't. Because you hated. It's. I made that deck purposely for you because you hated poison counters. It was a poison counter deck. Skitherix as my commander. It was pretty badass. It, it was, would actually. I don't, won th- I don't think it was badass, but <laughs> it was really cheap. It was and, what it was, and too easy. Yeah. It so. Was just, Personal favorite, uh, leeches. Um, I think <laughs> now, do you even have this in any of your decks? Do I? Because um, it would people, be more of a sideboard, but we don't play sideboards. Yeah, and, so. and people do we don't agree with me poison that counter stuff. Yeah, poison counters are like a thing that I don't like. And so I think people... I think our play group kind of... Respect. 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 <laughs> our play group has kind of steered away from it. I don't yeah. think there's... I think the only thing... I currently have is Triumph of the Horde that will do poison counters, and that's just to kill somebody. You know, that's yeah. The game tri- ender. Triumph of the Horde is yeah a game ender yeah. essentially. So, so that's I can why understand I have that, that in there because it's like all right, somebody has five hundred life. At least I know somewhere in my deck that's there, and I could potentially still kill them with poison. Counters. Yeah, we should argue about this sometime. So. <laughs> Wait, you don't even have one of those in your decks? That, that's pretty badass. I actually like that card a lot. Um, but yeah, oh, leeches. By the way, uh, did I say that seventy five cents? It's just like yeah, yeah. seventy five cents a yeah. dollar. It's it's worth picking up a so couple because there's no other way of getting rid of poison counters. Yeah, it's really unique, and um, yeah, I like it. The next card is Mudslide. This is from Ice Age. It's two colorless and a red enchantment. Uh, creatures without flying do not untap during their controller's untap phase. At the beginning or at the end... Gosh, I can't read it. It's so far away. At the end of <laughs> his or her upkeep, each player may pay... At the beginning of their upkeep, isn't it? At the No, it's at, at the, the end. end. His or her upkeep. Oh, okay. So it's at the beginning. It's the end of your actual upkeep yeah at the beginning that's weird that's really weird wording right yeah, there because that's not normal at all the end of your upkeep no nah. anyways so you get to pay two each player may pay two to untap 
one of those creatures. One of those creatures. So yeah. you can do it for multiple creatures. As there. long as it's on the ground. Yeah. It doesn't untap unless you pay two. So you got to be playing kind of a heavy flying, flying. deck because this yeah. does affect you as well. And, and I and I play this in my Ur Dragon deck. Oh, you do have it in your. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that it's, makes sense. They're I, dragons. I have a ton of flying <laughs> dragons that aren't affected by this. Be weird if you had ground creatures there. That's yeah. a good idea to have it. So you actually put it in there. Nice. Yeah. And it's, uh, I think, a pretty solid. Like it just it slows down the game while I'm speeding up into huge fatties huge fatties <laughs> <laughs> uh, 50 cents right now so it's a pretty decent buy um, it's, it's kind of like uh in my mind it's a focused yeah you'd have um, to be propaganda or ghostly yeah. prison um it weirdly backwards almost kind of yeah i think it's I, better because it, it it affects like mana elves yeah so it's not just attacking you it's yeah it's actually, just if yeah. you want to use any of the tap abilities yeah. on them it'll mess with those as well but you just the, the problem the only downfall i see with it is then you have to be a specific flying deck it, it does kind of corner you into but you're in that. red which like you are using the uh, ur dragon it's dragons yeah so that's, but it, that's it my seems, favorite it I'm, seems powerful it can go in kalia yeah. of the vast um i feel like it could put, potentially go in a, a flying heavy like Aurelia the war leader yeah. uh, which is an angel that flies and double attacks and you know yeah no I, I think it's pretty good I'll have to make a flying deck because I don't have a specific flying yeah. deck although I do have that dragon my uh Rawr. Scion the Ur dragon Scion of the Ur dragon yep. yeah so I could put it in there I just have to make room. That means I have to get rid of a dragon. Yeah. Can't do that. Dragons aren't, <laughs> dragons aren't that good, don't yeah. worry. Uh, and then our last card, we both like this card a lot. Uh, yeah. Two colorless, two blue, another enchantment. All these are enchantments. It's pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah. Uh, shimmer. It is Shimmer, and when you play Shimmer, choose a land type. All lands of the chosen type gain phasing. So another another card that you would need phasing. to learn f- how to do phasing <laughs> proper. Make sure this that you know the rules douche, on it. Douche play for yeah. some so games. if somebody's like a mono colored deck, they essentially lose <laughs> their mana get a turn. each Whoops. turn, like each other turn. <laughs> yeah. And that that is a feel good to me yeah. in my mind. And this one recently jumped in the last uh, six months. Here it was under a buck. Now we're sitting at about three dollars, so yeah. and I, th- I pick up definitely a copy or two of this one. It's it could go in any of because you get to choose. So yeah, depends you, on how much you dislike somebody yeah. as well. Like, Make it affect you and them as long as it's really affecting them. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I but most of the time you get to. I mean, whenever there's a choose a color type thing, you can typically figure out the one that doesn't affect you and get everybody else yeah, or the most yeah. people out of one, it. One of the nice things about it is it messes with somebody's land, but it doesn't like get rid of it. So it allows yeah. people to play. I think it's better than Armageddon in yeah. a commander style deck, like because it does affect it's it's similar to like uh Hall of Gemstones, which forces somebody to choose just one color if they're multicolored. Yeah. And this is similar parameter of messing with somebody's land. Yeah. I like it. Very good. All right. I think that wraps up our list for our 15 and under. So those are all pretty much the cards we felt like for your commander set. um, Added to to your collection. Yeah, to your collection before they actually jump to crazy, crazy numbers. Um, That's the thing. Reserve list is really hard to predict what's going to happen because they have a lot of older cards that are just not good. Yeah. And they're they're a lot of crappy cards which i feel like how did they even choose the reserve list stuff because some of the stuff is like well why did you put that on there because this is shit it's it's (laughs) essentially the rares from uh a certain point of time backwards and but is it all of them because i felt like some of them they didn't yeah some of them they they didn't uh some of them they reprinted in chronicles uh and there's there's a lot of information on reserve list yeah. if you want to go check it out, go, out there. <laughs> not going to go over yeah. that right now. We, but again, we don't want to talk about if it's good, bad, or anything else. We just kind of picked out the ones that we felt would work well it, with it Commander. Is what it maybe is. a couple of them that would yeah. work outside of Commander. but um, the, the, Something worth at least getting one of so that you don't get priced out in the future. Yep, and that's the main thing. Because if yeah. you, wanted, you find a deck that you're making later and you're like, oh, this... Shimmer car would be pretty sweet in this deck, but oh, dang it, it's $40. Yeah, well, that's what that's, I'm trying to tell you. Here's well, some well, of the well, ones that you can buy right now. and It's three bucks. That's yeah. that's definitely worth it. So, Anyways, this is uh, Commander Smith's episode three, so we are signing off. If you need to get a hold of us again, once again, we're on Twitter, at Commander Smith's. And, and if you want to shoot us an email, uh, commandersmiths at gmail.com. And, uh, yeah. 
give we'll us any and, comments yeah. or anything like that, and we should be on a regular basis here coming up. Yeah, we're going to work on that. <laughs> so. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys have a good one. Enjoy. See ya.